when you look at a crop like this, you wouldn't uh, think that there's actually a problem with rhizoctonia in this paddock, but in fact there is. And when you have an even more careful look, you'll notice there are scattered whiteheads in the paddock as well. So this crop has a, a problem with rhizoctonia. It also has a crown rot issue. 2020 has been an ideal season for cereal root diseases such as rhizoctonia. Confirmation reports have been received from Western Australia and across the southern states, including here on South Australia's York Peninsula. In this paddock, the grower has been experimenting with liquid streaming fungicide above and below the seed. So on this side of the crop, we've got a single band of fungicide uh, put below the seed to protect the seminal roots. And in this part of the paddock, they've used a dual band above and below the seed to protect both the crown roots and the seminal roots. There's also an area where the crop has not been treated with liquid fungicide. So in this single location, Dr McKay will be able to demonstrate the impact of rhizoctonia and the effectiveness of these different crop protection options. So what we're going to do now is uh, sample some plants from this crop. So, the, um, so what we're going to use is a cut down shovel. It makes it a bit easier to get it into the ground, particularly if the soil is a bit dry. But going to go to the middle of the row uh, and then push the shovel as deep as you can and then lift it trying to get below the root system. So we're not going to try and, try and get as much of the roots into the sample as possible. When checking your own crop, take about 15 samples from across the paddock, ideally 10 to 15 metres apart to get a representative sample. So here we've got a number of plants um, and we've got at least probably 10 centimetres plus of the soil. So we've got a good representation of the roots. Samples collected, the plants can then be prepared for examination back at the shed or in the paddock. To really see what's happened to the roots, it's really important to wash the roots properly. Particularly if the root systems are reasonably healthy, uh, you get a lot of organic matter caught up in the root systems and you have to take the time to really clean that out. Shallow white trays filled with clean water are best for examining the roots. Alan has used three trays to separate the samples taken from the treated and non-treated areas. This set has come from an untreated area, so there's no products applied to control the rhizoctonia. This one's had a fungicide liquid stream below the seed, and the one on the ends had a fungicide streamed above and below the seed. These plants are from an area of the paddock that hadn't had fungicide applied. And if you look quickly at this, it looks like it's got a good primary root system. If you look carefully at this long root, you notice how it's going thick and thin down the length of the root system. And the branching off the roots are not particularly healthy. So the rhizoctonia is actually working its way through those roots. And there are lesions developing all the way up that root. And it's about to break off up near the top of the plant here. Also, if you look carefully at this plant, the crown roots have all been tipped at the top, so they've been, they've started coming out to the side, but they've all been, uh, got spear tips on the end. The importance of the crown roots is that they support the tillers on the plant, and particularly when conditions get tough. We recently had uh, about two and a half inches of rain here, so these plants will survive better than they would normally have, but had it been hot and dry, um, this root system will just continue to uh, be eaten away by the rhizotonia. In the middle tray, the sample is from an area of crop where liquid fungicide was only applied three to four centimetres below the seed. The first thing you notice is that the root, the seminal roots, or the primary root system, is much longer and it's got more fibrous uh, secondary roots on the root system. If you look closely at those, there's a lot less um, damage to the cortex, so the rhizotonia is not um, attacking that root system anywhere near as much as where there was no product applied. But when you look at the top of the plant, you've got a lot of crown roots coming out of the top, but most of those have actually been taken off by the rhizotonia. Now the other thing to notice about this plant is it's got about four or five tillers per plant. So it's probably got more tillers than this plant can support if the uh, conditions were to turn hot and dry. 
and there's already evidence of crown rot developing in some of those tillers. Now if we look at the ones that have got the dual banding, so this is the same total amount of product but it's been split above and below the seed. So if you look at the crown roots on this, the band at the top, those crown roots are much longer and there's more of them so it's much more congested up near the top of the plant. These plants were particularly hard to clean um, and in the process I probably lost some of the seminal roots as well. But again there's more, there's a reasonable seminal root system here and again these plants have quite a few tillers per plant um, and with the rain that's just come there's a very good chance that most of those heads will set grain. What these three samples have shown is that in a crop which looks healthy, rhizoctonia can in fact be widespread. They also confirm liquid fungicide applications above and below the seed offers the best protection against rhizoctonia, supporting the research findings of Alan McKay and his colleagues. And that it's only by digging up plants to inspect their roots that a grower can know for certain if this fungal root disease is present. When we look at rhizoctonia as a disease, it's one of the more difficult ones to manage. So in recent years, what we've found is that um, rotation does have an effect. If you get years of consecutive dry springs and dry summers, you can, most paddocks will actually have a significant level of rhizoctonia in them. It's a cereal on cereal rotation that is at greatest risk. If you put a cereal after a grass-free canola or a pulse crop, the rhizotonia inoculum levels are actually lower. You won't get rid of it altogether, but it'll be lower than if it was following a cereal crop. And where cereal follows cereal, Alan McKay's recommendation is to use a fungicide seed treatment or liquid fungicide banding with fertiliser to protect root systems and help get crops established. Make sure you get the crop in as early as possible within the optimum window. It's very important that the roots, the primary root systems established while the soil is warm and moist. As the temperature drops, the root growth slows down and we start to see in a lot of the early sown crops, most of the damage occurring in about mid-July when the soil temperature is around 10 degrees. In wheat, it just causes slight unevenness in the crop. In barley, it can have a dramatic effect and cause quite strong undulation in the crop. And that's because barley tends to produce more tillers per plant. So if it loses the crown roots, uh, that has a dramatic effect on tiller number and also tiller height. Another research finding is that the season itself can have a big effect on rhizoctonia's impact on crops, reducing yield up to 50%. Particularly those years that had good soil moisture coming into early spring, and then followed by hot northerly winds, high temperatures that put the crop under stress. About a week ago, it was looking like that there would have been at least a tonne difference in these fungicide treatments compared to the untreated. A lot will depend on whether we get some hot northerly winds in the next week or two as to what the losses are going to be. It has been a bad season for rhizoctonia right across many grain growing districts and there will be yield losses as a result. But the research led by Alan McKay confirms there are crop protection and management options available. So if you go to the GRDC website, search for rhizoctonia, you'll find uh, there's information for most for western and southern region. Go to the description bar below for the latest information, links and resources.